Hello and welcome back to the third rail. We have a new addition to the collection this week. I just received this class 50 of the ÖBB, the Austrian Railway Company, and I thought we should have a first look at it together. First, let's have a quick model overview. The model was introduced in the Merkling program in 1989 as part of the export models brochure. It appears there on page 22. As with all export models, this locomotive was sold exclusively in a single market in Austria. In this case, the model could be ordered in 1989 for delivery in spring 1990. There was a slight modification made for the worldwide edition consisting in a printed number on the tender. Then in 1992, a version 2 was released, which had brand new running numbers, different on the tender and the body of the locomotive, as well as black wheels. On to a few vital statistics. The model measures 26.1 cm buffer to buffer. It is of a full metal construction for the boiler and chassis. The tender is made of molded plastic. The model is equipped with large wind deflectors of the type Wagner. On the technical side, it's fitted with an electronic reversing unit, which powers a three-pole motor, which in turn drives five axles. Four of the wheels are equipped with traction tires. The model is fitted with running lights, which are non-directional, so are on all the time, whatever the direction. On the coupling side, we have a hook at the front and a relax coupling at the back of the tender. The locomotive is also equipped with a factory preparation for an optional retrofit smoke generator. Let's have a look at the prototype. Here is a picture of it sometime in 1974. I had done a overview of the class 50 in another video of mine on the channel. I'll put a link at the top of the screen now, but it's basically a standard locomotive of the former Deutsche Reichsbahn. This example was produced by the Wiener Lokomotiv Fabrik Floristdorf in 1940 for the Deutsche Reichsbahn. Austria was part of Germany at the time. It spent a few years in service for the Deutsche Reichsbahn, after which it was leased to the Romanian Railway in 1943 and remained there until 1945 when it was returned to the authority overseeing the Austrian Railways. In 1947, it was then transferred to the inventory of the Federal Austrian Railways, where it remained in service until 1972, assigned to freight and passenger duties. The locomotive was transferred to another company, the GKB, based in Graz in Austria. There it performed similar duties, freight and passenger traffic, until 1978. Upon its decommission from GKB, the prototype was then transferred to the Historische Eisenbahnverein in Frankfurt am Main in Germany where it was used for various rides in the Frankfurt area. Here we have a view along the river Main in Frankfurt sometime in the 1980s. The prototype survives until today. It is currently on loan to the Technik Museum in Speyer and forms part of the locomotive exhibition there. Let's have a look at my 3319 now. It's a version 2 produced in 1990-1991. 
So the box is the right one, that's a good start. Let's have a look at the state of this box. Yeah, that's fine. Minimal scratches here and there, nothing to complain about. The tray is the right one as well, that's always a bonus. Yeah, can't complain. So let's have a look inside and see what expects us. According to the auction listing, the model has even been recently serviced with clock oil. Wow. We'll have a look at this later. Well, everything seems to be there. Paperwork, guarantee, and the plastic inner packaging seems to be intact. Excellent. Let's have a look in there. So let's try and pull out the locomotive from the uh, protective sleeve. It's always a bit tricky, it always sticks. Yeah, everything's fine on that side and the inner blister tray is also intact. So, can't complain. And the model already looks very good from here. So I'll take it out and put it on its presentation rail and we'll have a closer look. And there we are. Well, it doesn't look too bad uh, from the perspective of the realism of the model. I'm not too sure the livery is 100%. I'm not an OBB expert, but I'm pretty sure that the OBB used uh, quite a bit of red pinstriping here and there, which is obviously missing. The color of the wheels is, of course, not the right one, so I'm not sure to what uh, year this livery applies. But uh, overall, it doesn't look bad at all. Let's uh, quickly go around the model. So, as we can see on that side, all the details that should be there are there. From the uh, bell to the various bits of piping, if you look at it from a profile. It looks quite impressive. I quite like the large Wagner wind deflectors. The front is intact, everything's there. The other side, the other profile looks good as well. The uh, safety valve is there. And there is no defect to speak of as far as paint or broken up parts are concerned. All the ladders are straight and the painted details are still present where they should be. Now let's have a quick look at the wheels. Yes, everything is cleaned, present, nothing seems to be bent the wrong way. All traction tires are there. The locomotive seen some track, of course, but that's not a bad thing. Let's move on to the top. Everything is there, nothing's broken, same story as elsewhere. Brilliant! It's time to see if the locomotive performs as well as it looks, I think. So, we'll move to the layout and see the effect of this wonderful service with clock oil, shall we? So, I've moved the loco to the layout and giving it a bit of power. It goes backwards, delayed response forward, but it's changing direction, it's good and I can see the light is working, but I find it very noisy for an engine that's just been serviced, or serviced recently. Okay, we'll have a look at this from a bit closer. So let's start with a check of the wheels. Right, the front truck has got seized wheels. Let me just turn the loco on its back. Yep, yeah, seized wheels, although they are moving now a tiny bit, now that I'm pushing them, but I need to uh, do something about those. Yep, it's moving a bit better, but still not quite right. That axle is fine, that axle is nearly seized, so it needs oiling, that is fine, that is a bit seized, that is nearly seized. All the traction tires there. Let's check the wheels on the tender now. The first axle is seized and the other three are fine. Ah, this one's moving now. Okay, but not great. So, 
uh, we bit of oil on this one as well. Hmm, not great. Anyway, I'm going to check the traction tires now to see if they've been changed recently. That looks okay, and the other ones are fine too. Excellent, so that's a positive point. Right, I'm going to have a look inside to see exactly what type of service has been done. I'm not expecting much, so let's uh, take the body off. And the first thing I'm going to check is the motor, and I'm going to remove the brushes and inspect them to make sure they're not full of oil or other debris. That will be a good indicator of the state of the motor armature. And things are looking up. It looks like the brushes are just fine. Yes, they're in very good shape actually. Right, let's check the motor now. So I'm going to uh, remove the motor plate and inspect the inside. So first I'm going to do a quick check of the rotor and then I'll check that the motor armature is clean. So I'll grab a quick cotton bird. Doesn't look too bad at first, but in the end it hadn't been looked at during this uh, service it's supposed to have had. So uh, I finished the job, or did it, depending on the, the point of view. So the rest was in good shape, actually very good shape. So it was just a matter of uh, putting a few touches here and there, a little bit of lubrication on the rotor armature and putting everything back together in the reverse order of disassembly. It was time to look at the wheels, starting with the ones in the front truck. There the axle was seized, it was easily freed up with a bit of oil and gentle persuasion and after I was finished with it it was as free as it was when it left the factory. It was just a matter of doing a bit of cleaning in the area and reattaching the front truck. I was then ready to tackle the other seized axles. There it was the same technique bit of oil where the axle meets its bearing, wiggle the axle a bit, that usually is enough to free it up. Then I finished with the lubrication of the gears and I was ready for a quick function test to make sure everything's in the right place. So it's a matter of quickly putting the chassis without the body on, on the track and do a quick back and forth to check. Everything was fine. So I put the body back on and then put the locomotive back on the track and sent it for a few rounds around the layout at low speed. I did this for the usual 10 minutes in uh, one direction always at the uh, same low or moderate speed and then repeated the process in the other direction to allow all the fluids to distribute properly and check that I haven't forgotten anything in the maintenance. After all this let's do a quick performance check at crawling speed. The locomotive responds instantly to changes on the throttle, that's good. Is it doing the same going forward? Perfect. Look at that. And it's even a bit quieter. Excellent. Well, this model might have been lubricated with a bit of so-called clock oil, but it's certainly not been serviced properly. I mean, how you could miss some seized wheels is beyond me. Anyway, it doesn't matter. I knew how to fix it, so not a problem. It's a very nice model and it seems to be a very good runner. I am now a very happy customer. I now just need to figure out what I should put behind this locomotive. At the moment I have absolutely no clue. So I need to do a bit of research and find out. You'll see the result probably in an upcoming running session. Right, that's it for now. I'd like to thank you very much for watching. I'd like also to thank the 
existing subscribers to the channel. It's very nice to see that people are interested in my content, so much so that they subscribe. Hit the notification bell to be notified of new uploads on the channel and sometimes even hit the like button. It's very rewarding and keeps me going. Thank you very much again for this. But for now, bye and see you soon on the channel.